in today's lesson, we're going to talk more about list operations. Some We're going to mention some more functions and some more methods that you can use with your lists. Let's just do a quick review. Remember, a list is a container that stores a collection of values or elements. Its values or elements are stored in sequential order, and the, that sequential order is determined by the index, and its length can grow or shrink. So today we're going to grow and shrink our lists. We're going to first talk about another list function. Let's review the list functions that we already have been using. That's len for the length, sum, max, and min. Remember, a function comes first, and then the list would be passed in as an argument. The new function we're going to talk about today is called list, and it makes a copy of your list. So for a list function, you can copy the same reference, which we, if you just make a copy of the variable, which is a reference, it refers to the same list. Changes made to the copy of this, with the same reference change the same list. I'm going to show you an example of that in just a second. But if you make a copy of the list instead of a copy of the reference, then you have two complete different lists. They start out the same with the same values, but they are two different lists instead of referring to the same list. When you make a copy, this list function is not a return function. It does take an argument, which is the original list. And here's an example of what the code would look like. So list is my function. The original list is going to be passed in as the argument, and it's a return function, so it has to be assigned to something. It's going to be assigned a new list. Each variable reference refers to a different list, although the lists have the same values. That's if I just copy the, the variable itself. So if I created a list called values, and then I assigned it to another variable called prices, they're both referring to the same list. This is what we do when we pass it in as a parameter. So if I use values as an argument and it goes into a function, then whatever I call it, whether it's the same name or not, it's actually just a copy of this reference and they refer to the same list. That's why I don't have to say global or do any kind of things with my list. If I just make a, you know, pass this in as a parameter, it makes a copy to the same reference. My list gets changed inside the function and main function refers to the same list. That's what's happening with our parameters. But maybe I want actually two separate lists. Then I'm going to use the list function like it is right here. Values was my original list, and I assign it to my new list. Now I have two. I have values and prices, but notice that there's two separate lists. So if I don't use the list function, I have two variables that refer to the same list. If I do use the list function, then I have two lists and each one has its own identifier or reference. We're going to practice that today. So let's try it in a new program. And it is said in the textbook, you can just create a list by giving it value. So I could come in here, instead of doing empty brackets, I could actually just do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I could actually just list my values if I know what, the, what they're going to be. So this is one line of code versus you know a for loop and it's a great option if you want to do it so that you don't have to use a for loop with a pen to create a list you can if you know what you want to start with you can just start with it the other thing you can do like when we did our dice rolls and we wanted to have start a list with just zeros and we did a for loop for that and there's a shortcut for that that's called replicating and what you use for replicating is the asterisk. It's like multiply, so it's kind of like multiply. I'm going to use, this is the value that I want to replicate, and then this is the replicator operator, and then I say how many times. So if I want 10 zeros, I can just do something like this. Then I'm going to call my print list, so you'll see that I have 10 zeros. So this is something that we could have done for dice rolls. It's just a nice little option. So I've shown you a couple of things, uh, options for when you're creating lists and putting values in them.